who doesn't love the Chinese? They make my Android phone batteries that kind of explode whenever I plug them in. Hello. Thank you, China. Your sweatshops are working at peak efficiency at providing me with the ultimate materials to make my exploding phone bombs. I'm not doing that, by the way. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. That's not me. Style, you know, today we're not talking about modern day China. We're going back. I mean, uh, we're going way back. I mean, like, we're going back like 1800 years. We're going like 200, 300 century uh, that, around that time period. Now, tell me, have you ever heard of the Three Kingdoms era of China? Because that's today's topic. That's what we're going to be talking about. Today is all about Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Definitive Edition. The title alone gives me a brain hemorrhage just trying to think about it. But I can assure you that this game allows me to achieve my true dreams of becoming a god of war, murdering thousands of soldiers upon the battle. If you've never heard of Dynasty Warriors, I'll give you a brief summary. It's a hack and slash game. If you ever know, if you ever heard of a Hyrule Warriors, same vein as that, you're going around killing hundreds of thousands of troops, also made by the same people. And instead of uh, set in a fantasy world of Hyrule, it's set in the fantasy world of 200th century China, when three Chinese warlords fought over the entirety of China. There was the water, earth, fire, local peasantry. All right, long ago, during the Han Dynasty, everything was at peace until the yellow turbans attacked and everything was thrown into disarray. So basically, the Han Dynasty hired a bunch of warlords to kill every single last yellow turban. Went pretty good, uh, except uh, except for the yellow turbans. They all died. Uh, sucks to suck. Now, in this game, there's a lot to choose from, right? There is 83 playable characters. Now, if I knew how to count, which I, which I don't, by the way. I don't know how to count. I'm completely illiterate. Huh? That seems like a very high number, and it would take a long time to play each and every one of those characters. And on top of that, there's also a multitude of weapons to choose from, which are completely historically accurate. By the way, I want to get that right out of the way. You got things like swords, spears, palm tree, magic. But when picking a weapon, you need to keep something in mind. You need to keep some colors on the icon of the weapon. So you have blue, red, and green. You'll need to change between these colors to uh, get maximum efficiency out of your weapon. Get the maximum amount of damage and to know which does the maximum amount of damage uh blue trumps green green trumps red and red trumps blue you'll kind of need to watch this on the enemy officer's weapon icon as uh it it, it basically if you don't have the right weapon you're not going to do the most damage and even throughout the fight they're going to be able to change their weapon color so uh you just got to be on the watch out okay everyone else though Everyone else, uh, and they don't have to deal with the weapon color or affinity system, so uh, they're all free for the for the pickings. I mean, use whatever you want. I mean, kill you're gonna be killing hundreds of these guys and maybe even thousands. It's 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 gonna be brutal. All right. Oh, and before I continue, if you buy this game on PC, uh, don't expect the the button icons to change. They're not going to. They, they're going to stay the keyboard binds. Uh, so, yeah. If you're using a controller, uh, you best have a very good memory of what your binds are to. Because you're going to have to set those up manually as well. Uh, this is... It, it's a... it's a, it's a, it, The port runs well, but, I mean, there's some things that uh, could have been done better. Alright? And I can't find a fix for this, but if you can... Help, help a brother out, please. You know, these, these streets are cold, and the, the, the homeless shelter is filled up with crackheads. So, to be honest, it's a coin toss to where I sleep tonight. Other than uh, the fighting, which is you're, mostly the main thing you're going to be doing, there are other objectives that you can do. Uh, mostly, because you're just going through historical battles of the Three Kingdoms era. So, usually, it's more of just, like, uh, helping or killing enemy officers, retreating or going to certain points capturing or protecting outposts it's not very complicated i mean the main point of this game is fighting hundreds of thousands of people kind of just looking like a badass on the field 
During combat, you will level up your character and get different weapons from enemy officers when they die. Uh, the, these are, you know, to make your character more powerful. You also get skills from doing certain tasks throughout the mission. Things like uh, killing an enemy officer uh, with an attack boost gets you an increased attack skill and defense for uh, defense skill. And then so on. The moral of the story is you have made a pimento cheese sandwich. Congratulations. Now, it's time to talk. It's time to talk about this story, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just to, just to let you know a little something. I kind of just want to talk about the history. I like this area of history, China. I think it's cool. But uh, anyway, there are five different stories that you can follow in Dynasty Warriors: uh, the Wei, the Wu, the Shu, uh, the Jin, and Lu Bu. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna talk about a general overview, talking about each story individually. It would would take way too long. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna give you a general overview of what happened during this this era of China. So we're gonna take base in around like late 200th century. We're getting towards the end of the Han Dynasty, and a group of peasants were kind of ticked off. Right? They were saying the Han Dynasty was corrupt. They weren't helping people, so they just created a rebellion. They called themselves the Yellow Turban. And they're pissed. They're, they're going around uh, literally killing people. Even though the people they were killing were other peasants. It's crazy. Crazy. They, those people are insane. So the Han, basically failing to quell the entire rebellion, asked any warlord they, he could just to help him because he, he needed as much help as he could. And this would bring rise to the following very important people during this era. Cao Cao, Liu Bei, Sun Jian. These guys would get rid of the yellow turbans. It, it was a collaborative effort. There's going to be many of the warlords who help, but they're not important. All right, these guys are these guys are dope. But during the rebellion, Dong Zhou, another warlord, seized the imperial court and took the emperor hostage. So basically, he gained all the power in uh, because he had he had the emperor. The emperor is basically seen as as a god. He's so he has complete power over China. Sometime after this, the Emperor would send a letter to Cao Cao asking him to kill Dong Zhuo. Because Dong Zhuo is a dictator. He's a big old stinky doo-doo face. So Cao Cao would gather a bunch of warlords, you know, uh, Liu Bei, Sun Jian. As well, he would also gather his friend, Yuan Shao, another well-respected individual in China. And they would go in to Hulao Gate where they would have a very grand battle to take back the emperor and would lead in a victory for this uh, coalition of warlords. Uh, Dong Zhou would flee and then he would also soon be killed by his adopted son, Lu Bu, uh, who was known throughout the land as one of the greatest warriors. With the victory at Hulao Gate, Cao Cao, Liu Bei, and Sun Jian would go on to grow their empire. Cao Cao would kind of grow his empire up north and that's kind of where he would stay. Uh, Liu Bei would kind of wander a bit. Uh, he would start off kind of like in the eastern part of China, but he would drift over to the western part and would solidify his empire there. Uh, Sun Jian already kind of had a place for himself in the western part of China, so he would kind of just stay there and grow his empire. Uh, Cao Cao from here on out would be the ruler of Wei, Liu Bei was the ruler of Shu, and Sun Jian was the leader of Wu. For a while, China was just in this kind of constant struggle of uh, Wei trying to move south, but Wu and Shu formed an alliance as they didn't like they didn't like Wei. They saw Cao Cao as a a warlord. Go figure. Uh, they didn't like him at all, so they would basically just stop his advances as they had this incredible amount of might compared to just one nation. Uh, the thing that would really stop. South South from pushing south was the Battle of Chibi, uh, where basically Wei created this giant fleet of ships that were going to sail down south into uh, Wu and Shu territory. But uh, the Wu and Shu burned the boats to the ground, forcing South South to flee and just further expand his nation up north. Basically, for a, a while at this point, they're just going to solidify themselves in the, their locations. Wu in the west, Shu in the east, uh, Wei in the north. Just kind of how it's going to be. There's going to be skirmishes of, from everyone. 
but nothing really changes until the uh, battle at the Jingling province. Uh, during this battle, Wu broke the alliance with uh, Shu. You see, uh, Wu gave Shu some territory, the Jingling province, and uh, they were gun they were supposed to give it. Shu was supposed to give the province back, but Guan Yu, uh, the sworn brother to Liu Bei, didn't give it back. He just kind of kept it. So Wu was kind of pissed about that. So they formed a temporary pact with Wei to attack Shu. Guan Yu uh, was killed during this battle, and it was it was a mighty blow. Guan Yu during this time was known as the God of War. So killing someone called the God of War, that that's gonna be very that's gonna be impactful. That morale is gonna shoot up. Uh, Wu would regain this province, and Wei would just go back doing their own thing. Uh, kind of from here on out now, uh, we see a lot of Shu trying to push into uh, Wei territory, kind of where they're located. Uh, it doesn't go very successful. There's a, there's a lot of push forwards and push backs uh, on like the border between the Shu and the Wei, and it doesn't really change for a long time. It wasn't until the death of Shu strategist Zhuge Liang where the tides truly changed in the power dynamic in the Three Kingdoms. Zhuge Liang was a great strategist for Shu, and same thing with Wei, they had a great strategist known as Sima Yi, and with Zhuge Liang's death, Sima Yi just kind of retired. He didn't really have an opponent to go up against as, as strong as him. So he left the kingdom in the hands of his sons. And he left him in good hands, as his sons were able to break through into Shu territory, allowing them to force Shu to surrender. Wei would go on to completely take all or take over all of Shu's territory, and over time they would also get all of Wu's. And Wei would become victorious, and Cao Cao's dream of a unified China would be underway, at least for a short time, as his son of Sima Yi, would change the name of Wei into Jin. So, ending the story of the Three Kingdoms. In conclusion, Hello. This video was funded by the Chinese Communist Party. And from here on out, I will be living in China. This is of my own free will, and I am not being forced to do this by anyone else. Please like, sub, and subscribe. And, um... Uh, he is not winning the poop, by the way. He's not. That's stupid.